The HP switch is actually pretty loud. In case you can't hear it, you have the volume down or something, I'll put a tissue just to show that the fan is blowing, albeit not very powerfully. It's only putting out maybe 5 to 7 CFM. But it's quite loud. If I put the noise meter over here, you can see that we're generating, looks like about mid 40s in the DBA range, which is way too loud. I like to keep the lab below 30 if I can, usually below 20, and which is pretty much silent. So let's replace this fan. That's a 40 by 10 millimeter 5 volt fan. So I've provided a Noctua premium fan. That'll be the replacement fan. In order to open the HP V1910, we're going to need to remove seven screws two on this side, two small screws and a large silver screw on the back, and two screws on the other side. Once you have the seven screws out, locate this small little hole. It's on the back towards the bottom of the switch, and you can put a small screwdriver or something in there just to pop out the chassis. Slide it out, and then flip it the correct way. And there is the inside of your HP switch. There's only one fan inside the switch stock. It's right here. You're going to want to remove these two screws over here to remove the fan. And also, you'll want to unplug the power pins. Now that the fan has been disconnected from power and has no more screws in it, we'll need to remove these two little zip ties that are hooking the fan to the chassis of the switch. And there we go. The old fan is now removed and we're ready to start inserting that new quiet 5 volt fan. There's a few problems we have to solve to move forward. The first is that the Noctua is a 3 pin fan and the stock HP fan came with a 4 pin connector. There's a couple ways we can solve that. We can either use the little grooves inside of the connectors to pop the pins out and then realign them to match this guy's connector, the 4 pin connector. Or Noctua includes these little scotch locks here. And what these do is allow you to feed in two pins, the incoming and the outgoing, for your wires. So what I've done is I've cut the connector off of the Noctua fan so that we just have bare wire, and I've removed a piece of the insulation because it's quite annoying. I've also severed the other fan that was stock so that we just have the connector and a few leads here. So I'm using the scotch locks to connect the two wires together, only because uh, upon inspecting the removal of the pins, they don't match, so I can't use the pins from this guy into this connector. These are uh, kind of a compression rollover pin, and this one is a box pin, so they're not compatible. When you're doing the scotch locks, be sure to compress the little yellow hat here fully. You don't have to strip the wire, you can just put it in with insulation because there's actually a crossbar inside of the scotch lock that's going to basically cut through the insulation and create the circuit. So just make sure to crimp it really hard. I like to use a pair of flat compression grips to make sure that I get it and you'll hear it pop. Let's do one real quick. Okay, now it's time to test to make sure the fan works. I've completed the crimps. Note that red goes to red, black goes to black, basically our voltage and our ground. And then the yellow, which was white on the stock fan, is going to be our tachometer to let the system know the RPM of the fan. So before I like to go any further, I like to test to make sure that the fan is working. So I've got it plugged in here. Grab power cable. And there we go. The nice thing is you shouldn't be able to hear the fan because it's actually really outside of the audible range. So it's sub 20 decibels, so it's not something you can hear, but it pushes out a fair amount of air. You can see some dust blowing around on the switch. And we need to install the new fan. One final test to make sure it looks good. Let's button it back up. Unfortunately, the rubber feet are too large for the case, so I have to just use regular screws.
I'm gonna make sure everything is nice and tight. Fits back in there. It almost has a little bit of a, a jump to it when you actually slide it all the way in. And the back here with this little opening hole should be flush. Put in all the screws, give it a shot. Let's repeat the sound test now that the switch has a new fan. So just to prove that it's on, because you probably can't hear it, you can see the tissue blowing. But now the decibels are much lower. And that's how you replace the fan in an HP V1910 switch. Nice and quiet. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.